Welcome to Montreal Rocks. And today, very excited to have Jason Corbett from the actors on the show. Jason, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, Jason, I always like to start with uh, a little bit about your backstory. So I'm going to set the scene for you. This is maybe a memory that you have, but you're playing air guitar in front of the stereo and your mom asks you if you want to actually learn to play for real. Now, I hope yeah. she didn't say that because you were doing bad, because it's really hard to mess up air guitar. But do you remember what song you were playing? Um, I think it was Def Leppard. Def Leppard, it was uh, Photograph. Definitely a great song to play air guitar to. Yeah, it was the first 45, like it was the first vinyl 45 that I had got my mom to buy me. And um, we had lots of good music in the, in the, in the apartment, but that one, like I, I really got into the whole MTV vibe and the guitar playing vibe. And so that was, that was the one. Yeah. Like the reason it, I asked is it, I like to like to know if there's a band or a song and maybe that was the one that kind of, you know, where, where music becomes your own, you know, you sometimes we listen to the music that our parents listen to, but then we find the right. band or something triggers us. Do you have that right. other song? Well, there was a there was a lot going on. Like, I remember seeing uh, Billy Idol, the video for Dancing with Myself, um, David Bowie, uh, Let's Dance had come out. So, like, those are a couple of artists that really, you know, I felt like I was discovering them on my own in some way on TV and like the police were on TV a lot and Prince, Madonna. So there was like this exposure to a lot of this music that over time, somehow I've come back to as an artist to kind of pick sounds from like almost, sub, uh, you know, subconsciously. We must have grew, grew up in the same age group because those are definitely the ones I remember listening to as well. Uh, right. After that you kind of uh, got into your one of the first bands, the Saddle Sores. What was the uh, right. what was the attraction of going into that style? Um, for some reason, I was getting really into like rockabilly and that kind of vibe. Like Reverend Horton Heat was around Social Distortion, which wasn't rockabilly, but had that kind of kind of flair to it, and. Uh, there there was just like a, a scene here in Vancouver that was that was very theatrical and embracing these different styles that were more flamboyant and you know uh, very show showy you know like so everything from like you know tapping into uh like glam and 80s kind of post hair metal stuff and so I thought it was a really fun project I wanted to join as a guitar player and the other guitar player said, well, why don't you try singing? And that's really how I started singing in bands. You even toured in a place that had a resident goat wearing PJs. <laughs> yeah. So your, your, yeah, we, your adventures took you far and wide. Yeah, I've seen some crazy things over the years, that's for sure. Uh, you went to the next band, which was Speed to Kill. Or one of the next bands, right. you so many. I'm just picking some of the, the big ones. And, and that yeah. was another shift in styles. So now you're right. into a whole different genre again. Yeah. Um, I felt with the Saddle Stores, I wasn't writing so much. I was more, I was doing some writing, but it was more about, you know, I was doing my best Elvis impersonation, you know, in this rockabilly band. And, and, uh, I really want to express myself as a songwriter and I was kind of dipping in more into like late seventies kind of rock. Like I was really big into cheap trick at the time. And so that's where speed to kill kind of started with its influences and it's slowly, but surely just, I just kept kind of growing as a musician and really growing towards where I need where I wanted to be from the beginning but sometimes that's a journey and it takes a long process to get to know yourself and of course actors is the, the final part of your journey 
which is where we are yeah. now. And even right before that, you were in the restaurant business. Did, did that give you any skills that you use in the music business? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, 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 it's like when we're at shows, before the shows, after shows, like I, I feel I can kind of hang with anybody. Uh, I feel very confident as like you know speaking in public or off the stage or in the crowd you know at the merch table because I've really had to put that face on um, as a restaurant manager as a server and and um, to me that's that's what I really enjoyed about the restaurant business is the people and that's what I enjoy about music it's the connecting to people talking to people and, and I'm, I'm comfortable doing that because I just I don't know it's I, I, I get a lot from it so it's not a it's not an ego thing or like I don't need to be, you know, held on a pedestal as a musician. I, I just like to connect. I'm interested in connecting with, with people who understand where I'm coming from with the music, you know. I was I was told by some that you did that. So that's it's very good to, that you take the time. Um, so we get to the band, the actors. Um, now, we don't need to talk too much about the name. It's always been talked about, but. Well, you know, some of it is about how we're expected to act in society, which is a, a, some part of why you chose that name. But in what right. situations would you say that we should go off script and not, not act like everyone else? Yeah, it, it, to me, it was like, it's just that we all are all acting in some way, putting a, you know, putting our best face forward, you know. For lack of a better way of explaining it, and and I think that I, I'm I really believe that there needs to be uh, as an artist or a musician, a band, however you want to describe it. There, you have to connect with some sort of honesty in yourself, and and uh, I just thought it was a I thought it was a cool uh, a cool name, you know. A lot of people ask me about it, and I don't have a really strong. Uh, it could mean a little bit of something to different people. It definitely doesn't mean we think we, we are going to be in show business as actors or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I'm going to read you a quote from David Lynch, one of the, act, uh, the, the directors that you uh, like, and it relates to music and it kind of talks a little bit about this connection. So it's uh, the quote is, I think that ideas exist outside of ourselves. I think somewhere we're all connected, often some very abstract land, but somewhere between there and here, ideas exist. Now, your music definitely connects people. I know because I joined the Academy Fan Club, which has almost 1,300 members. Had a really long chat with, uh, oh, what was her name? Uh, Kim Pop. <laughs> right. Very generous with her time. So she is. How do you personally tap into that abstract land to bring these songs to life so that you can connect with people? What's your um, Well, I'm a producer when I'm at home and not on tour. So I work with a lot of other artists. Um, again, it's been a long journey for me. I've been playing music for a long, long time. And it, it's, um, it's, I just literally wrote a quote about it for our press release about an hour ago. It's a matter of if you're, if you can tap into what what your true feelings are, what the like the song, the songs, the music, the creativity, if you're not hampering that connection to those vibes and that vibration and the universe, um, it, it, it comes in a, in a real natural way. And if you're and if that music that you're bringing through yourself it has that element of honesty i believe that's what people tap into mm -hmm. um i can't I, I can't i can't really explain it any other way it's before with my bands i was trying to do something to make a certain demographic happy or trying to get on the radio or try like i think about music like oh, okay well how do you keep someone's attention for three and a half minutes or what makes a song not boring or when so should a song uh, evolve? I think about these things because that's craft, but in terms of the sparks of inspiration or a lyrical line, it's like, 
I often don't remember, I have to relearn all my lyrics because I'll, you know, play the music and kind of stream of consciousness, kind of let things come out. And, and, and when you're lucky, when your mind's still enough, these things come to you. And um, I really believe in that. And I learned a lot from doing transcendental meditation. Um, and, and that's why I'm such a fan of David Lynch. Like I always loved his, his movies, but then to read that he does transcendental meditation. And I, I was really worried about meditating because I used to have bad anxiety. I thought, well, meditation is going to make me really, you know, peace, love, hippie. And I won't be able to write from this dark place. But his movies are dark and he's been doing it all these years. So um, I, I found it, it, it helps you dig deeper and get into these ideas. And I think that's what he does with transcendental meditation is that, that area where he says these ideas live where you know beyond where we're connected or intermediately connected somehow like i i very much believe the same thing and i and if you're open to it if you're open to that connection with people through your music it's it's already happening it's like and um i you think can you, you can nurture that i think you nailed it when you said that it's when you stop trying to please other people, but you just did what felt natural. That's where it all yep. unlocked. And that's where you make the connections. And, and that's the exact opposite of being an actor. That's right. why I enjoy speaking with musicians way more than speaking with an actor, because an actor will portray some, somebody else. They're going to fake their, you know, themselves to become somebody else, where as musicians will often uh, work through those processes. In fact, you just talked about darkness and, and David Lynch. You once said... Uh, we need to celebrate in the darkness or it will devour us. So how yeah. does music writing bring light into your world and kind of release that darkness, work through it? Well, it's like, um, if you're afraid of, if, if you're afraid of, of clowns or like there's that, you know, and you, and you spend enough time with clowns, you're not gonna be afraid of them anymore. Or like you're afraid of the dark and then, you know, then you're once something's exposed it's not scary anymore and you can mm -hmm. deal with it more rationally and, and sometimes you can uh, escape kind of vicariously through a song or with music and explore these darker thoughts and realize oh i'm not the only one feeling like that and uh it's it, it, it makes it less scary and the world's a scary place and there's uncertain times and um right now is has been chaotic to say the least and and so, you know, we can choose to uh, be scared and, and, and recoil, or we can choose to reach out, connect, and revel in these times and enjoy our friendships, you know? And I think in terms of personal development, to be able to work on yourself and to kind of go sometimes to those dark places allows you to shine a, a light. And maybe you, you can see a past experience from a, a different angle, and it no longer... Uh, might affect you as much as, as before. And I think uh, a, a lot of people fi find that camaraderie in, in the music and the, this connection with other people too. Right. I want another David Lynch quote, which relates. Uh, he says, a filmmaker doesn't have to suffer to show suffering. You just have to understand it. You don't have to die to shoot a death scene. Now, right. there's this old myth that to be creative, you need a little bit of liquid inspiration. But you've been sober. So how has that helped you? as a musician well it's just it's bought it it buys you time and clarity um i wish i had stopped drinking earlier you know um i i wasn't down and out and jobless and in a gutter and <laughs> everyone's everyone's uh rock bottom looks different and some people can drink and um you know and 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 have moderation in their lives and i i'm not like i felt that for me i was just if i would go out and drink i would be so hung over that uh, emotionally mentally the nervous system just felt destroyed so uh i i i realized i didn't have the luxury of three lifetimes to try and realize my goals and dreams what i didn't realize was the the positivity and the the productivity uh, that was going to just, I'd have this kind of watershed of like, uh, of, of productivity because I, I have, 
it feels like I have a whole extra week within the week because I'm not out partying or whatever. And to suffer for your art, I think what that quote from David Lynch really nails it. It's some people have this romantic notion like, oh, I'm going to just throw caution to the wind and quit my job and be a full-time musician. It's like, it, that's in the movies. It's like, you have to be smart, you know? And I look at everything and anyone who knows me has heard me say this. It's uh, multiple revenue streams and baby steps. Mm -hmm. If anyone thinks that, you know, like, oh, well, I don't have to work because, you know, actors is touring or this or that. Like I work my ass off at my studio. I, I'm here every day. And if I'm not here, it's because I'm doing something with actors. And I think uh, everyone has to work really hard to get where they want to go. And, and um, that's important to me because I have a lot to, stay, to uh, say, you know. And not only actors, you also uh, are a big part of Leathers. Correct. Yeah. Which is another project. Uh, we are all, just before we, uh, we round this out, uh, I always like to go look at the first Instagram post, which was an October 24th from the Fox Cabaret. Was your first ever post on the... Oh, really? Can you take us back to that night at the Fox Cabaret? Oh, boy. The, are, that was like my first Instagram post with actors? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I should have put the date. I just put... It's probably October. It's on October. I don't know. It was the Fox. Huh. It's hard to say. We've played there a few times. Um, the band, the band started off, it went through a couple different lineup changes. Adam's been with me, but when Shannon joined the band, and of course, Shannon is the lead, the, the figurehead of Leathers, and that's her project that uh, I'm, I'm involved with. Um, when she she filled in and when she joined the band, um, everything kind of started to flower with the music. And I, re I had realized all this time that um, there's a strong feminine component to the music I write. Um, and having a, a woman in the band, now two women in the band, it really- Perfectly um, calibrates. Cal yeah, it cal calibrates. That's a really good way of putting it, yeah. Well, uh, one thing I like to do uh, before, uh, do I have time? Let's try to do it real sure. quick. Fantasy yeah. rock band. I like to, you know, you probably heard of fantasy sports. I'm into music. So let's build the ultimate fantasy rock band. Singer, uh -oh. guitarist, bassist, drummer. What would you choose? <laughs> Dead or alive? Uh, oh man, I'm awful at this. It's normally the first thing that comes to your mind that's the best answer. Well, David Bowie singer for sure. Um, uh, guitar player. Uh, oh boy, Adrian Below or Robert Fripp. Um, just because I like what they did together. Um, since Brian Eno and uh, drummer, let's pick a. Uh, uh, Lindrum drum machine. <laughs> hey, that that works too. Sure. Uh, I have to ask about the Batman underwear. I saw somewhere on Instagram a pair of Batman underwear, and I go, "Are they still in use?" You know what? I wear those on days when I'm like, I'm going to write a hit song today, or I'm going to have a good day today. <laughs> I saved them. Uh, I think I got those at Walmart somewhere like in the States. I was like, oh my God, these Batman underwear. It was like, it's old school Batman. And it was like one pair on the rack and they're super comfortable. And I <laughs> save them for special occasions when I want to feel really special. That's cool. Yeah. September 22nd, 2021, you'll be appearing at Bar La Ritz here in Montreal. And of course you've got a big tour plan. I hope yes. that you have nothing blocking you from that tour. Uh, you have a new single that just came out, very, uh, uh, a video reminiscent of, uh, of some of the older movies that we've seen. Natural Born Killers. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Only the Lonely that was just released. So, uh. Only Lonely, correct. Yeah. Go, gra go, you know, listen to that song before the new album comes out. Acts of Worship is coming out very soon. You're having a, yeah. a pre-sale, I believe, on Friday. Yeah. Pre-sales for the record start Friday. You can order, the, um 
the vinyl CD, the download, and we've got t-shirts coming as well with the artwork on it. So I'm really excited. It's a long time coming. And your Kim Pop was saying, uh, why have they not done a live stream? We wanted a live stream, but it's finally coming. August yes. 6th, you have a live stream coming as well. So I'll, I'll put a, li a link in the show notes so people Please can get do. to see you live before you come. Yeah, I feel like the live stream, it, it went pretty well. It was nice. It was the first time that we had played a couple of those songs in front of anyone. So um, yeah, it, it was awesome. I can't wait. To, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice way to get started before we go touring. Well, we look forward to the tour. And if you uh, have two minutes, I might ask one more question or two, sure. only for the Academy. Okay. I want to do a little special for thing just for them. So I'm going to say bye right now, but we're going to stick around just for the Academy. Okay, cool.